Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose S is an ordered set. If S has the least upper bound property, then S has the greatest lower bound property. Now, if you recall, to say that S has the least upper bound property means that every subset of S, which is non-empty and bounded above, has a supremum. To say that S has the greatest lower bound property means that every subset of S, which is non-empty and bound below, has an infimum. Now, to say that a subset of S is bounded above means that the subset has an upper bound. To say that a subset of S is bounded below means that the subset has a lower bound. Now, I would like to explicitly remind ourselves the definitions of upper bound, lower bound, supremum, and infimum because it's going to be important to observe how we use those four definitions in our proof. Suppose E is a subset of S and C is an element of S. To say that C is an upper bound of E means for all X in E, X is less than or equal to C. To say that C is a lower bound of E means for all X and E, X is greater than or equal to C. To say that C is the supremum of E means C is an upper bound of E and for all gamma in S, if gamma is less than C, then gamma is not an upper bound of E. To say that C is the infimum of E means C is a lower bound of E, and for all gamma in S, if gamma is greater than C, then gamma is not a lower bound of E. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start out the proof, we're gonna suppose that S has the least upper bound property. And from here, our goal is to show that S has the greatest lower bound property, which means we wanna show that every subset of S, which is non-empty and bounded below, has an infimum. So since we're trying to prove a statement about every subset of S which is not empty and bounded below, let's give ourselves an arbitrary subset of S which is not empty and bounded below. I'll call that subset B. The whole goal from here is to show that B has an infimum. Now, let's denote the set L by the set of all lower bounds of B. Now, our plan is to use the fact that S has the least upper bound property to show that L has a supremum. And from there, we're going to proceed to show that the supremum of L is in fact the infimum of B. So, let's first show that L has a supremum. And to show that L has a supremum, we're going to show that L is non-empty and bounded above. Because if we can do that, we can apply the least upper bound property to conclude that L has a supremum. Well, we can show that L is non empty because we know that B is bounded below. Since B is bounded below, this means that B has a lower bound. And we know that the lower bound is going to be an element of L. So L is non empty. So we know L is non-empty. Now let's show that L is bounded above. And to show L is bounded above, this means we want to show that L has an upper bound. 
Now it makes sense to expect that every element of B is an upper bound of L. And let's actually prove that. Since we're trying to prove a statement about every element of B, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element of B. And from here, we want to show that B is an upper bound of L. And by definition of upper bound, this means we want to show for all L in L, L is less than or equal to B. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every element in L, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element of L. From here, we want to show that L is less than or equal to B. Well, since L is an element of L, this means that L is a lower bound of B. What does it mean for L to be a lower bound of B? Well, by definition of lower bound, it means for all X in B, X is greater than or equal to L. So we know that this is true, and this statement works for every element in L. So in particular, it must work for B. So taking x to be b, we have that b is greater than or equal to l. So what we see here is, under the assumption l is an element of l, it follows that l is less than or equal to b. Since l is arbitrary, we have shown for all l in l, l is less than or equal to b. So we have proven precisely this statement. Right, and remember, this means that b is an upper bound of L. And since B was arbitrary, this means we have shown every element of B is an upper bound of L. And then since B is non-empty, we can pick some element in B. And that object is going to be an upper bound of L. So yeah, L has an upper bound, which tells us that L is bounded above. So now that we've shown that L is non-empty and bounded above, well, the fact that S has the least upper bound property means that every subset of S, which is non-empty and bounded above, has a supremum. Therefore, L must have a supremum. And we'll denote the supremum of L by alpha. And continuing with our plan, our goal is to show that alpha is the infimum of B. So looking at our definition, we're going to take C to be alpha and E to be B. So to show that alpha is the infimum of B, we're first going to show that alpha is a lower bound of B. And by definition of lower bound, this means we want to show for all B in B, B is greater than or equal to alpha. Now, actually, this is the same thing as saying for all B in S, if B is an element of B, then B is greater than or equal to alpha. So we're going to prove this. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every element in S, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element of S. And from here, we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. But we're actually going to prove the contrapositive. That is, we're going to prove if this is false, then this is false. So let's suppose that this is false. So really, we're supposing that B is less than alpha. And from here, we want to show that B is not an element of B. Well, since alpha is the supremum of L, well, by definition of supremum, we're going to take C to be alpha and E to be L. It means, in particular, we have for all gamma in S, if gamma is less than alpha, then gamma is not an upper bound of L. So this statement works for all elements in S, so in particular it must work for B. So taking gamma to be B, we have if B is less than alpha, then 
B is not an upper bound of L. Well, we know that B is less than alpha. That is what we have here. So it follows that B is not an upper bound of L. And let's remember, we proved earlier that every element of B is an upper bound of L. So it cannot be the case that B is an element of B. For if B was an element of B, then B would be an upper bound of L. So we have proven if B is less than alpha, then B is not an element of B. And by the contrapositive, this means we have proven if B is an element of B, then B is greater than or equal to alpha. So we have proven that this is true. Since B was an arbitrary element of S, we have proven for all B and S, this is true. So we've proven this entire statement, and that is precisely what it means for alpha to be a lower bound of B. So we've proven that the first thing holds. Now we want to prove that the second thing holds. And since we're trying to prove a state about all elements of S, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element of S. We'll call it gamma. And we want to prove if gamma is greater than alpha, then gamma is not a lower bound of B. So let's suppose that gamma is greater than alpha. From here, we want to prove that gamma is not a lower bound of B. Well, since alpha is the supremum of L, we know in particular that alpha is an upper bound of L. What does it mean for alpha to be an upper bound of L? It means for all L in L, L is less than or equal to alpha. Right, this is what it means for alpha to be an upper bound of L. And another way of putting this is it's equivalent to saying for all L in S, if L is an element of L, then L is less than or equal to alpha. So we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every element in S. So in particular, it must work for gamma. So taking L to be gamma, we have if gamma is an element of L, then gamma is less than or equal to alpha. So let's use the contrapositive, right? We also know if gamma is greater than alpha, then gamma is not an element of L. Well, we know that gamma is greater than alpha. That's precisely what we have here. Therefore, gamma is not an element of L. And since gamma is not an element of L, well, by definition of L, this means that gamma is not a lower bound of B. And that is precisely what we wanted to show. So we have shown if gamma is greater than alpha, then gamma is not a lower bound of B. Since gamma was an arbitrary element of S, we have shown for all gamma in S, if gamma is greater than alpha, then gamma is not a lower bound of B. So we have proven that the second thing holds. So we have proven all requirements for alpha to be the infimum of B. So now let's put this all together. We gave ourselves an arbitrary subset B of S, which is non-empty and bounded below. From there, we showed that B has an infimum. Since B was arbitrary, we have shown that every subset of S, which is non-empty and bounded below, has an infimum. And therefore, S has the greatest lower bound property. And therefore, if S has the least upper bound property, then S has the greatest lower bound property. And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.